Hey, what's up, everybody? We Man here with my pilot buddy, Tom Cruise Jr., Poncho <laughs> Muller. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you look like I'll Tom take Cruise that. today. I'll take that. Oh, the, oh, the jacket. The flight jacket, your hairdo. It's the rain, dude. Oh, it's the rain? I don't know what you got going on with your beard, though, either. What, what, what's the, what, what does shaving this part do? This is uh, the Ar Armenian strip club owner look. Armenian you know? strip club? Wait, speaking of which, have, were you working on something lately? Yeah, I was working on a movie, and Can that's kind of what my look was. Armenian, it. Armenian strip club owner? No, I, well, I mean, obviously I'm not Armenian, but it, it, they gave me like kind of almost like the chin strap. Yeah. The chin, chin strap look. Are you going to run it for a little bit? Is that your It gives me a strong jawline. I've had a few compliments. women compliment me on it. Give you a little... I don't, well, not that, but like, <laughs> didn't go that, I don't let it get that far, Jason. Oh, you don't let it I get that far? I <laughs> Oh, wow, dude. What, do you even have fun anymore, bro? Of course I have fun. You, you, you <laughs> come out with me. You yeah, know, I'm you, the life of the party. You do have, uh, wow, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Pull the reins on that one. Yeah. Life of the party? I'm not doing keg stands no more, but yeah, <laughs> I mean, I try to have fun. <laughs> I hear you, I hear you. Well, welcome everybody to another episode of Little Revolution. Oh yeah, we have a great guest today. He's uh, he's up and coming. I don't know what he's up and coming for, but he's up and coming. He's known very well on social media. He uh, his regular day jobs probably hated by a lot of skateboarders, but his fun job is loved by skateboarders. I want to welcome from. Kick flips and donuts, my buddy Zach Rand. Woo! <laughs> Appreciate it. What's up, Good Zach? Good intro. Appreciate it, man. Thanks for thanks for having me, guys. Yep. Yeah. So obviously, the I I didn't mean like hated by skaters. Oh but. no, no, I get it. I knew starting it, it there's gonna be a lot of pushback growing up as a skateboarder myself. I no, mean. I hear you. Uh, you're a police officer. I am. Yeah, out in Arizona. Arizona. Um, you wear the full uniform. Punch was like, is he like a security guard or something? I'm like, no. <laughs> no. I did not. I was <laughs> the full deal. That. I, I was like, this dude's sleeved up, man. He's sleeved up. You got the neck tattoos going. I'm like it would be bad. Are you are you a detective or cop? No, no. So now now I'm not on the road. I'm not working on the road. I'm more on the community outreach side of things. Okay. So that started in the beginning of this year, but before then it was just straight patrol. What is community outreach uh, have to be like so, tell, the, tell the community uh so pretty much just uh you know going out helping you know communities engaging with the communities figuring out you know what are some of the the rising issues in certain areas that we're responsible for as well as you know everything from coffee with the cop you know back to school drives bringing backpacks and school supplies for kids that need it so on and so forth. Just a lot of community engagement. Stuff that I was already doing in my free time while on patrol, but now I get to do it mm. full time. So that's rad. And you said you started out like so you've been skating for a while. How old are you? Um I just turned thirty three on Monday. Thirty oh well, happy belated birthday. Thanks, man. I appreciate nice. it. Nice. Glad you can make it out during birthday. Oh week. yeah. Um, so you're thirty three. Uh, when did you start skating and like kind of what was the era of skating when you like started? What videos were you watching? Oh man. So I started, I started skating when I was six. I, as ironic as it is, you know, the whole big wheel thing here, but I started off like riding around scooting on big wheels because scooters weren't around and yeah, we all know not to ever touch a scooter, but started off on a big wheel and these kids down the street, thankfully saved me. They're like, Hey, ditch the big wheel. Here's, <laughs> here's a board. It was shot up. This thing looked like it came out from like a Jaws movie. It was an old blind board, thrash the hell, no tail, no nose, nothing. But I just became infatuated at this thing. And from six to 17, right before I went into the military, that was my, that, that was, was my your start. skate era. But as far as like videos, um, you know, almost round three. Yeah. Right. Mouse. Ooh, Dying to live. Uh, Digital Sane, so a lot late of 16 90s. and below, so a late lot 90s. of 401, yeah, a lot you, of 401. Do you have a favorite skateboarder from that era, street skater? Oh, man. Uh, Name like top, like top, top five. Top three. Top, top three. Top, top three. three that I continuously watched was Eric Costin, Joey Brzezinski, and Brandon Beeble. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. So during that time era, mm -hmm. that was your time. 
Uh, where were you skating at? Uh, so through like the Glendale, Arizona area. Oh, so you've been out there the whole time. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought you lived down here for a little bit because you said you knew like Sheckler and Sheckler's. No, so that's just that's I, yeah, building contacts. Yeah, just uh, getting to okay. know, you know, somebody and you start and develop these friendships and all that other stuff. So, there you go. Okay. Yeah. Unfortunately, I think I probably would have maybe gone a few different places. I mean, the the atmosphere here in skateboarding is just a whole nother animal. As yeah. We all know you go. I could see somebody from California at an Arizona park and they could just do one simple flat ground trick. And it's like, yeah, that dude's not from Arizona. That's a California guy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it is a different, there is different style, different ways of skating when it's out here. Um, grew up Glendale, Arizona, started skating six to 17. Were you kind of like a bad kid? Is that why you, did you go into the military when you That's were 17? Yeah, I, I yeah. led myself, well, I ended up in the military just cause I mean that, 2008 2009 time frame like trying to get a job at like a grocery store you know yeah. i remember i applied at a grocery store and i applied at a pet smart and it was like jobs were non-existent the economy is like at an all-time that low. was a recession yeah that's when yeah all-time low yeah and uh market. obviously i didn't have any scholarships and i absolutely hated school i like the social aspect of school but i absolutely just hated being in a classroom so um my cousin ended up going to the Marine Corps probably about a year or two before me and he ended up getting injured in Iraq and that was kind of like, all right, like I, I need to step up for my family. Yeah. Go get some and, and, you know, do my part. So that's what led me into the army. You went into the army? Yeah. Where were you stationed out of? Um, so I was everywhere in the army, uh, at Benning, I was at, uh, Knox, Campbell, and then, uh, some time at JBLM. Okay. Nice. And you did how many years served? Uh, I did six and a half active and then a little bit, a little bit in the reserves. Were you in a, so your cousin was in Iraq war. Or yeah. Afghanistan. Yeah. He was in yeah. So he was in the Iraq part. And I mean, when I went in, you know, things were still hot in yeah. Iraq and Afghanistan. I just drew the card and I ended up in Afghanistan. So that was my time. Oh, wow. So you time. were in the shit. Yeah. 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 <laughs> 2000. Like yeah. 2011. Uh, yeah, 2011, November 15, 2011. Um, yeah, I was actually blown up on a, on a QRF mission to go check on some things. My vehicle that I was in actually got blown up and laid me up in the hospital, put me on a long road of recovery for, you know, upwards of two months or so. So then were you discharged after that? No, no, I, I just fought through, went through the physical therapy and everything that I had to do to be able to get back to doing what I was doing and eventually just finished my time out and just got out like anybody else. Here's your DDT-14. Have a nice day. QRF. Uh, Quick I know reaction it, force. Okay, because yeah. the IED, I know, is they plant like landmines. Oh, most yeah. Most people either yeah. walk on them or yeah. tank rolls so, over yeah. them. Our vehicle, our vehicle actually just ended up rolling over the pressure plate, and that was it. How uh, uh So we were in a Max Pro, so one of the bigger vehicles. Damn. Yeah. Any of your boys get really messed up? Uh, our driver ended up, uh, so they didn't fly me out originally because, like, if you get pretty messed up, they'll fly you out, they'll medevac you, just through stages of medical treatment and stuff like that. Yeah. They'll send you to what the nearest post right there in Afghanistan, and once you're good enough, they'll eventually get you over to, like, Launchville, Germany, and then back into the States. For me, one of the main injuries that they were concerned about was a TBI so they didn't want to put me up in the elevation and something me, you know, something more serious going on upstairs and oh wow, you know, up in the air and up yeah. going going out. So. so they kept you low, kept you on the ground. Yeah, did a majority of my treatment. I actually got to stay longer for that deployment. I uh, so my guys came back towards the end of that year. Uh, well, yeah, towards the end of the year, beginning of January. So it was like usually January to January. My guys, you know, were starting to come back into the States around December, so I got to have a little extended stay in Afghanistan. Nice. All right. So you did your military service. You got injured. Not bad, because obviously you're here. Yeah. You look fine, and I couldn't even tell you've been injured. You come back, and you decide, do you go into the police force right away? No, or? so that was the weird transition part is that, you know, I went in and in high school and stuff like that. All I did was skate. All I did was skate. I, okay. I went into the military and it was just this whole new world. It was, you know, hey, 
but everything was kind of given to you. I don't know. Was, was there any other skateboarders in the military like while you were No, there but nowadays, station? you know, nowadays there's a huge scene of it. My buddy Zach Sales actually runs a, a huge page called Official Military Skate, and I see all these clips of dudes in like full uniform, like doing tray flips and stuff like that with boots and everything. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, I, when I was in, if I even had the time to skate, like none of that stuff, like there was no time. It's kind of crazy when you do the tray flips and stuff because all that stuff is so heavy, like you're yeah. Bad. The gun, like yeah, the, yeah, it's a little constricting the, the for sure, everything. for sure. But you know, the transition process. Like I said, I was I was young. I was you know wet behind the ears, as you may may call it. And I went in the military and kind of was bred to what they wanted. I was molded to what they wanted. So when that time came where my service was done and they gave me the DD two fourteen, it was like, all right, cool. I have you know about a month and a half left of leave that they're still paying me to kind of reacclimate myself but you know after that i'm like dude what am, what do i do like i don't i don't, I don't know what lost. to do like i don't have to wake up at six o'clock in the morning or anything like that um so i was lost for a, a long time man i was lost yeah. and uh i eventually put myself into school using some of the benefits that are given once you're in the military I used my gi bill went to school and i'm like you know school i looked at it a little bit differently when i was in high school um, a little bit more grateful and appreciative, but then uh, once I was done with school, I'm like, all right, I got to do something. I got to do something with this. And um, the only skills set that they gave me, because I was an infantry guy in the army, was here's a firearm. This is how you assemble it and and clean it and fire it. And this is how you go and find and hunt bad guys. So it's like, you know, how can I, how can I shift that? I guess bounty and, uh, hunting. <laughs> bounty hunting, right? Yeah, dog. The bounty <laughs> hunter was pretty <laughs> big. <ass. laughs> yeah. Yeah, but uh, police yeah, officer. I ended up, you know, my grandfather, he was uh, he was a police officer. So I was like, well, I guess we'll we'll give this a go. And when I originally, you know, applied to get into law enforcement that time, it was like football fields full of applicants. Now, I mean, it's complete opposite of that. But yeah, it was really competitive to get in. So, you know, me being, you know, somewhat fresh out of the military, I still had that military bearing and. They just ate it up and I ended up getting involved or getting hired on with my agency. And, you know, here we are. Nice. So you're in the military or you're in, you're doing law enforcement work. Mm -hmm. You're, you know, you're back doing normal stuff and you start to have a family. And then you decide to go skating. Skateboard. Yeah. So uh, how as, did that as start? crazy as it is, man, and I feel like we're good back into skating. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I took, you know, a, a big break. Like, I mean, I was still monitor skating, you know, like I said, when I was in the military, like things were still hot. It was either you're training or you're going overseas. You're back yeah. in your training. You're going overseas. Things were still hot over there. So, you know, I'd still kind of see some of like the SLS stuff and updates so, like your big names, like your Nijas and Ryan and all those other guys. But as far as like the up and comers of like the underground scene, totally lost. Like, so what got me back into skating is, you know, my son was kind of going through like a lot of little kids, like the whole Coco Melon and all these YouTube shows and stuff like that, that uh. are there to stimulate kids. We were trying to weed them off that. And uh, I go out of the room for a second and I hear like, you know, the sound of like a, a skate video, you know, minus the music and I'm like, <laughs> what the hell? So I backtrack, go back into the living room and he's just watching somebody that I grew up around, Aaron Jasmoki, doing the Leon 25. My son was just locked into it. I'm like, Whoa. do you, do you want to, you want to skate? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, well, I know just the place, man. I took him over to Cowtown, got him set up. And I'm like, you know what? Like, your dad used to skate. We can use this as something as like a bonding tool you, or something. You started him off on like a pro board. Yeah, yeah. That's so nice. no, actually, That's his a, first that makes yeah, a difference. I started first, off on like a Veriflex. Yeah, yeah. His first uh, his first board was a, was a Cowtown shop deck, and then when I was looking for myself, I think the the culture shock and just for me to see how different skateboarding is nowadays is you know, I'm looking for the seven seven fives, and I'm like. So what what year was it that you stopped skateboarding? In uh, I'd say like 2007, 2008. So from 2007 till when did you? 2021. Wow, yeah, that is a big huge break. culture shock. 14 yeah. years. Yeah, I went in there and I'm like, I asked the the shop manager, Brian. I was like, hey, where's all the 775s? Like they had like the little termite micro board for my son. <laughs> 
And I'm like, where's all the 775s? And he's like looking at me like, what do you need a 775 for? And I'm like, dude, that's the last thing that I stepped on. And he's like, oh, no, dude. He's like, uh, I think, what size shoe do you wear? Oh, 11? Oh, 8.5, man. And I rolled around on the 8.5. And let me tell you, like, and, and the Army had, like, the Captain America effect on me. I was, like, 145, 150 pounds. I got out at, like, 200. It was, like, wow. prison. Like, all you could do is, like, work out and, yeah. you know, all that stuff. So, like, the equilibrium and getting certain tricks back was insane. But on yeah, an 8.5. A eight lot five, of upper body muscle now. Yeah. Weight now. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, huffing around an 8.5. Shout out to all those guys that ride, like, 8.5s and 9s. <laughs> there's, there's, like, little kids, like, my son's size that are – you know, wheeling around on nines, but that's just insane. So I ended up toning it down now to like eight one, eight two. It's a money spot right there. That's nice. Up. Yeah. So you've been back skating for about three years. About three years, yeah. And uh, what have you, like? Of course, your son encouraged you, and you're like, "Oh, this is a good mm -hmm. father-son thing to do. Let's go skate." And of being in Arizona, there's multiple skate parks oh, everywhere. A ton. A ton. Yeah. Yeah, so one of the things that resonated with me a lot, because I went, went and got my degree in administrative justice studies, criminal justice, yep. and, you know, in the police academy is a lot of these old guys, you know, all these old timers and guys that have already retired and stuff are like, they would always harp on community policing, getting out of your patrol car, getting to know the people in your community. Because a lot of times, man, you know, People don't want to call the cops. There could be a certain situation going on down the street. They just don't know how to communicate. So just they want to handle it themselves. Yeah, no it, one wants know, to be a rat. Exactly. So just is. build relationships with them. Get out of your car. Go and talk to kids. If you see kids, you know, playing basketball, go engage yourself with them. And that's just something I've always been like a very outgoing, social person. And I'm like, you know what? So even before like starting kickflips and donuts, I was always out there like, hey, how's it going, Tim? Like. Your front yard's looking great, you know. <laughs> hey, is that sod? Nice hedges you got there, there you buddy. Go. Yeah, yeah. So for me, like, like I said, you know, my whole entire life it, it, it has been a challenge. Like growing up in, you know, somewhat of a crappy neighborhood, skateboarding and and everything that comes with it. You guys know, getting kicked out of spots, running from security yeah. guards and no, cops yeah. and all that other stuff. For me, I was like, you know what? I'm like kind of looking around, and especially like now that I'm back into skating, I'm like. You see all these videos of cops stopping and getting Shaquille O'Neal to play basketball with all these kids. I'm like, how rad would that have been? Even though I didn't grow up in the era of like skate parks everywhere, but how rad would that have been if like a cop showed up to a spot and skated with you, you yeah. know? Or, you know, hey, that, that board of yours is like bummed. Well, hey, if you give me a kickflip or something in five tries, I got a freshie in the car for you. Like, it's a little it's shock to them. It's a huge so, shock because. It, it, there's there's multiple things that come to mind with this. You're doing this in an era now where skate parks are everywhere. Mm -hmm. Everything's accepted. Like skate parks are like basketball courts yeah. in every park. So if you think back to the day when we started, no way would a cop like pull up and be like, dude, I grabbed a couple boards at local skate shop over here. And if we're going to do this rail... You know, let's let's do it together. Yeah, be more yeah. like, I told you not to come here. Yeah. And you're back here destroying pro public property, give you a ticket. No, uh. but there's even skate videos. I want to say it was the Plan B video. Questionable the, video? Yeah, where they go and there's like three cop cars and the whole back seats of all the cop cars are like 75 kids boards yeah. just shoved in the back. Have, have you ever had nope. to give a skateboard ticket? Uh, no, no. You uh, would probably refuse. You're like, nope, no. no. <laughs> I, 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 I never forgot where I came from. Yeah. I 100% have such a passion and love for skateboarding. No matter what level I ever took it, it's it's an art. It's I mean, that's why we're all still involved with it. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's a part. Of, it's a huge part of me. Yeah. And reconnecting with it and after all those years, you know, and it, that was what I needed as far as, you know, kind of like to decompress myself, everything from the military and everything in law enforcement, like stepping on that board. It was mm -hmm. like every, everything goes away. Everything goes away. It's just you and the board. So, did it feel like when you first got back on the board, did it feel like when you first started skating? Oh, yeah. That yeah. Because that blind with no yeah. nose and no tail. Like I yeah. remember going to like my uh, my dad's softball games and I would have it in the grass at first and you're watching like the when Eric Costin and Tony Hawk had those trick tips, like when Eric Costin was like 
did the how to kick flip thing and before like all this braille and stuff like that it was going on and just trying to get a kick flip and then you get that first one and that's it you're glued like oh, no turn it back yeah I'll see ya so and then uh yeah i think my next board after that was uh um a world industries that was a world industries and then i'm like dude now i got a nose and a tail like let's up this and Repetition. Same wood. Blind was the same wood yeah. as World Industries. Yeah, so yeah. You kept but now I had same. a nose and a tail. Yeah. <laughs> so. We we had a, a dude in here, Christopher Height. Yeah. That uh, rides an old school board. It's got a, a smaller nose on there, but he, that's just like his thing. He yeah. loves riding that like fish tail. You yeah. may have old seen school. him. He's one of the Bones Brigade guys. He's yeah. one of the guns. Guns. He's really, he rips. Yeah. He's, he's, he's got like, like colored kinda, hair. Yeah, he's a yeah, emo yeah, kid. dude. On oh yeah, he's on those yeah those fishtails. He rips. Yeah. I've seen him at Venice and stuff. Yeah, yeah. he goes. He yeah, great. so we got. A, he goes to OC ramps all the time. So okay. anytime I come out here, I go into OC ramps. Um, and I've seen clips. Of, yeah, that dude. And shreds. he's riding. He's he's upgrading the old school shape to like fit nowadays concave. Okay. Because nobody else really did it, and a lot of boards were being reissued and stuff. Yeah. And he's he's brought it to a point where he's doing it on, you know, latest concave but old school shapes, and he's ripping it up to par with the kids nowadays. Yeah, yeah. Like, I've seen... blunt to fake, blunt kick flip out yeah. to fakey on, like, yeah. DIY. He's, he's gone and done some stuff at the yeah. barracks, too. Yeah, but he's done barracks. I know Andy he's Anderson, in... he came up with his own shape, too. Yep. That symmetrical, crazy shape that he's got. Yeah, so. being being a police officer in Phoenix, have have you seen some pretty crazy crazy shit? Like oh, when yeah. you're out, not doing what you're doing now. Um, but, yeah, just you yeah. know, various calls for service. I mean, I think uh, a lot of people ask me, you know, time in Afghanistan. Obviously, you know, war, it's it's not one of those forgiving things. You're gonna see things. You're gonna be a part of things that you're just like, dude, what? Like, you know, the way that I think things. I'm like, just two years ago, I was like trying to find a way to get out of biology class and you know go skate or something but I'm like now like you, you go to like a car accident where you know an innocent family you know is mining and going through a, a an intersection they have a green light and a drunk driver just barrels oh through that God. intersection to take out you know a whole family of five that was just on their way home from the grocery store or you know domestic violences or drive-bys you know a lot of that stuff I've seen yeah wow That's that's gnarly, dude. Yeah. <laughs> That's some everyday like craziness. Right yeah. There. yeah, yeah. Do you think that like being in Afghanistan and being like in that environment kind of numbed you a little bit to come yeah. home? Yeah, and dealing with the the crazy stuff that goes out. Yeah, here, I'd say I'd say goes so. On here. I think, uh, and and again, thankful for skateboarding for giving me that you know that that taking me away from all that just the mentally. outlet exactly um i think a lot of the stuff that happens on the streets and the patrol you know it uh i think that stuff hit me worse you know a lot more because the way that i'm i'm a deep thinker i'm like dude like i've been through this intersection like what if i was going through there with my son or something like that and that was us like or you know this incident that happened outside of this grocery store like i've gone in that grocery store before and bought milk or whatever like you're seeing it in your own backyard type of thing. Like Afghanistan, it was like a culture shock for me. Like the first like month that we had there that we were, you know, kind of climatizing. It's like, dude, like where do these people go to the bathroom? And, you know, yeah. they're truly living in mud huts. Like all yeah. this stuff that you see on National Geographic or the news, like especially that time frame is everywhere on the news. Um, but actually being there, boots on the ground, it's like, <laughs> whoa, dude, like there's no gas stations here. Mm -mm. Nothing. There's no 7-Eleven to grab a no. beef jerky and no, a, and not a at Slurpee. All. <laughs> not at all. Yeah. So. Wow. Um, do you still have PTSD from any of the stuff? Like is your explosion? Nightmares and stuff? No. Anything? No. Um, I think it's just, you know, I don't know if it's just like my whole way of thinking prior to. It's like I signed. I, I willingly signed this. I volunteered yeah. myself to do this. It's like one or two things is going to happen. Like, you know, it sucks to say, but I'm either going to come back, you know, in uh, a flag draped box or I'm going to come back on my own two feet or, you know, with some type of injury or something. Or but I put myself in between. here. I will only put myself here and I, and, and I got to look at the bigger picture, you know, yeah. I'm here to serve the people of the United States. Yeah. You know, I got to do what I got to do type of thing. And that's the same mentality that I had, you know, going out, you know, getting into law enforcement. I wanted to, I wanted to take everything that they 
taught us in the academy and go a million steps and be my own law enforcement officer, be more there for the kids and our youth. Why not get out of your car, you know, before we get into anything and how Kick Flips have done it started more, but why not get out of your car and make these connections, be a role model with these kids, prevent crime before it even happens, right? Build these relationships. Cause you know how many kids I have that reach out to me that have an interest of joining the military or some, you know, that are skateboarders that are like, Hey, like, you really changed my idea and you know my, my what do perception. you tell them when they have an interest it, it's i'm just blunt with them i'm like hey look you know it's it, there's there's going to be a lot of challenges in getting into either one of those professions or careers but uh you know it is it does have its rewarding moments it does let's uh dive deeper into kickflips and donuts like obviously you started like going to skate parks yeah. as an officer and talking to the kids to do yeah. this reach out thing yeah so it, but you know, what, like, now further, like, you're doing stuff where you have an Instagram just dedicated to this. You have shirt to give out stuff. You give product to kids. Mm -hmm. Like, get start us from the beginning, and what made you think to take it to this level now? So, again, you know, about, like, the whole community outreach and stuff, you see these coffee with the cop and all these different, you know, engagement methods and stuff like that that multiple agencies throughout the nation use, and... I'm like, you know, hey, like this coffee with a cop thing, I mean, it's great. It has its place, but it's like you're not reaching out. It's like there's not a lot of stuff going on with the youth, but yep. if there is, it's like your ball sports, like basketball, football and all that. Yeah. Like, you know, I grew up a skateboarder. Like I knew like going to a skate spot, you know, skating miles and miles and miles to get to a skate spot or just, you know, going to a skate park was like a treat. That was my getaway. That was my escape from reality. I was like, why is nobody going there and and – I think because up with these skateboarders kids. at one point were misfits. Yeah. You know, and there were the people like a cop's never going to go and bust a football player <laughs> or like a baseball player. Yeah. Like, you know, like, but skateboarders, hey, you're Kobe. like destroying public property. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know yeah. you're a street skater. So, when, so like, why would you want to go help that out? You know, and so you I kind wanted, of I wanted the challenge. That. I wanted the challenge. And uh, like I said, that, that interim of, in that beginning when me and my son, you know, he's learning to skate. I'm, getting back into it, starting to get my legs back. And, you know, the local park that I still go to to this day, they would see me like that. And then I started showing up in uniform and they're like, what in the Ethan Hawk from training day crap is going on here? <laughs> yeah. dude, like, are you a narc? Like, and it's like, no, dude, no, I, I, I skate this. That's just what I do for a career, man. Like I'm not here to bust anybody, man. Like I get how it goes. Just and then you skate. bust a 360 flip. They're like, holy shit. Yeah, yeah. And then, it, yeah, it goes into something like that. It's like, hey, you want to play skate, like, in uniform? And they're like, yeah. And then, you know, go is is, uh, is a tray flip your go-to trick? Um, do you yeah, do a tray, tricks, fakey tray. Tricks? Yeah, yeah. You didn't know, Ooh, fakey switch tray, it all up. Huh? Yeah. So that became, like, my own thing, like, just skating and gear. It's like, you know, I don't have as uh, big a bag as I had when I was yeah. younger and I'm not hoffed to myself yeah. off of like eight to 10 stairs anymore. Yeah. So it's like, kid, it's cool. Like kids recognize it. They're like, dude, like that cannot be easy with that Batman how, belt. How, and the how, freaking how old is Andrew Reynolds? I mean, you're 33. Yeah. He's so he's gotta be like late forties. Yeah, Andrew. late forties. Andrew's late forties, and he's hucking himself downstairs like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, Baker has a death wish part too. Like that is just that's mind blowing that he's still doing that. Like, but you know what? That's a cool thing about like skateboarding nowadays. Like you got guys like Neen Williams and all these. You know, some guys are doing it behind the scenes, but Neen's like you know promoting like, hey, like let's make some longevity out of this and take care of our bodies, right? Like let's, all the party years and stuff like that. We got to kind of tone down on that. Maybe have a, a mean green shake as nasty as those are. But if that can keep me on my board for another five, 10 years and swing a kettlebell, absolutely. then let's do it. Yeah. Shout yeah. out to Neen Williams. Yeah, Neen Williams. I love Neen. Love that. He was dude. a yeah, roommate of mine for a while. Well, not he. He lived at the house that I used to live at, but I used to always go back and hang out, and he lived at. Why, yeah. why are you trying to say you? I, you because he was up. name dropping, so I'm like, hey, like I, I know, that. You know what? No, it's like it's you crazy. Cuddled up with yeah, me. yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, me Nate, just cuddled you can, together. You can sleep in this bed with me. We got. So you. is this like back in the day? Because I remember I had reached out to him, and again, he's got a big following with everything from fitness and everything that he does with Deathwish and FP and and yeah, his burger. It's probably shop. like in 2009. All right. Yeah. So 
so I remember I remember coming across his Instagram and I would just be like I would comment on there I'm like because the 16 below like one of his parts in there is like mean the uh, mean Williams from Chicago and he had those same type of glasses but he just his he didn't have the dreads he's got a and he always wore flip. that splint oh yeah that heel flip is insane so but yeah now it's cool like getting to chop it up with him now that everything's grown and he's like oh okay and a lot of my stuff i was wearing his shoes so the fp shoes that he's got nice. it's kind of cool when like professional skateboarders like that can find like a different avenue because skateboarding doesn't last forever yeah for very few people are able to like you know make it last a long time yeah but others you know aren't and for him to be smart enough to kind of figure out a different avenue to go to where it kind of gives you that longevity yeah. to be able to skate longer is, is really exactly. cool. Whether exactly. you're drinking those disgusting shakes or, or not, or jumping into a plunge. <laughs> you Just ever done a plunge? Burger. I do plunges all the time. I did three yesterday. Shut three. up. Three? Yes. Wow. What? Where the Ask hell Eric are you D. hopping into a plunge at? Eric D and I go to the day oh my spa. god, and we do we you do. guys in your spa. You gotta come, dude. I know I'm I'm knocking it. I, I've just heard like the, so the we, weird. So I've never done like a formal one. Like I put stuff. the ice and stuff like that in the bath and got in there, but like you never done like a cold. No, pool? not like in a barrel and all those crazy yeah, things that they got going on. Eric D and I do sauna days and like we go real hot in the sauna. Like it's about two hundred in Dang, the sauna. Okay. Try and get as hot as you can in there, and then you just go and you jump in the cold pool and see how long you can last in that, too. You can last longer because you're like, you want to get cooled down. Yeah. So, yeah, I did it three times yesterday, bub. What do you, and yoga this morning. What's see, up? that's what I need see? to get into. Like, <laughs> let's go. Get your board out, bro. Calm down. All the <laughs> stretching and stuff. You or something? <laughs> no, just go cuddle with Neen. Yeah. That's all I want. <laughs> Me and my boy Neen. Yeah. No, but um, so kick flips and donuts. You're doing it. You're showing up to skate parks. What? How did you start bringing product to the kids? Like, so I was like, you know, you I, I had to. You find don't want to spend your own money. No, and, no. So I, uh, I was like, dude, there's got to be something that I can do. And I just, I brainstorm, and I'm like, you know what? Like, I thought about the shirts at first, but I'm like everybody's doing shirts like how competitive is that like nobody even knows who i am yet like how yeah. the hell am i gonna sell a t-shirt so i was like eh, you know we'll start with wax so watching youtube videos on how to make skate wax <laughs> and trial and error and just going around to some of the locals it's like hey try this out man like it's scented and they're all tripping out they're like oh this stuff works really good selling it for five bucks a bar and actually I, you know at first i was spending my own money i was doing off-duty jobs got it and uh i'd go to you know my good friends at cowtown and i'm like hey like this is this is what i have in mind this is what i want to do and they're like dude we back at 100 percent. like anything that we can do on our end and start snagging boards from there and uh yeah you know, if I seen somebody with a busted board, no matter what level it is, it could be like your OG at the park that's just throwing hammers down left and right to the kid that just started pushing that. You can tell like how exciting he gets every time he just rolls down a bank. And you know that like he's glued on that board like I was when I was six. And it could be on like a Walmart board. And it's like, hey, keep doing what you're doing. Here's a, you know, a toy machine or whatever, right? Yeah. Like keep stay with it man this this thing this piece of wood's gonna take you a lot of places as nice. long as you put the work in so i yeah, went from the wax and then got into the shirts and what really grew the page was i went into a park that uh is local to the town that i grew up in and at first i you know like every park you know in the beginning that i'd show up at people are like what who the hell is he here to kick you know kick out or anything <laughs> like that yeah. And then Who's they got see me pull the board. They see me pull my board out of the back, and they're like, wait a minute, what the heck? And uh, this kid's like, hey, you want to get a back-to-back -back -back board on this little flat rail? And I'm like, yeah. It's a nice little flat bar, like, you know, probably about 18 inches or so. And yeah. I'm like, damn, I wonder if I can get up on this in this gear. Like, this vest and this belt. I'm like, yeah, hey, let's, let's send one. Got on and got wheel bike coming off the first one and ate it. And then I'm like, all right, we can't go out. I mean, hey, for your edit, if you want to show a copy and crap on, yeah. you know, on a board, so have it, but we're going to, we're going to leave it this make. And then lined it up again in second try, got it, posted it. Um, I was a little weary at first cause you know, my agency seeing me going out there, like 
skating and doing something different, like, oh, no, you're going to hurt it, yourself. Your agency would be pissed. That's what I was in if, fear of. If, if, if you were skating on duty and broke your wrist. Exactly. Oh, my God. They'd be like, oh, you fucker. Yeah, yeah. And I see, I saw that in a lot of the comments. But this video, I mean, it, 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 hit, it hit social media, hit social media, and uh, it just blew up blew up you oh know, some goodness. negative comments but a lot of positive comments and uh somebody that's related to that kid his name is aj i think it was like Zon or something actually reached out to my agency my agency had no idea they're in the they're yeah they had no idea what the heck was going on so they reached out and they're like hey like i know this is one of your guys' deputies like what he's doing thank you like i don't know if you guys have a part of this but this guy is impacting more kids than you know Are and you so my Okay. No, so my agency was on board. They're like, oh, yeah, you know, yeah, he's one of us. We love him. Yeah. yeah. So the, the sheriff actually contacted me, and I'm like, oh, dude, I'm going to the hot seat. I'm toast. And he's oh, like, hey, God. man, um, real unorthodox way of community policing, but he's like, I like it. Let's do, uh, you know, let's do some, some safety videos, and we could do some giveaways and stuff like that, like, you know, <laughs> so cool. about pads and stuff. And I'm like, all right, cool. Like, I'll scratch your back. I mean, as long as you're not going to tell me to stop skating, then scratch yeah. each other's back, whatever. So we did a couple safety videos, and then they did a giveaway to a lucky winner, you know, whoever posted a picture and tagged my agency wearing a helmet. They sent them a, a CCS mm. board or something like How that. How do you but, feel about wearing a helmet? Like, you um, didn't grow up with a helmet. Yeah, no, no, so because scary. we all know, too, right? Like, a big part of skateboarding is, like, knowing how to fall. It's like, hey, if I'm, like, over this ledge a little bit too much, like, I need to go this way or I'm going to, you know, how I to always, avoid yeah, scorpion and all that. I always hate when people try to push pads on me. Yeah. But they don't understand where I'm coming from. Mm -hmm. You put knee pads on me, mm -hmm. that's my whole leg. Yeah. You know, I'm not able to move. You know, yeah. I'm like a stiff scarecrow. I'm like, this sucks. Yeah. How do it's you gonna, even have style with this shit? If it's like, gonna happen, and we all know, we all know the level of our yeah. limitations, right? Like, again, in uniform, I'm not gonna go and be like, hey, I remember skating that ten stair when I was a kid. Yeah, I used to kickflip over that ten rail. Let me send it in, in yeah. you know, in full gear. No, it's not gonna happen. <laughs> I have a mortgage to pay and stuff, right? I, did skateboarding die during the pandemic? And how was it in Arizona with the skate parks? Where were kids still allowed to go skateboard? Skateboarding um, grew during the pandemic. Yeah, I'd That's say so. I'd him. say so. <laughs> so I think uh, I think it was like shortly after the pandemic that I got back into skating. Mm -hmm. Okay. But, um, I agree with you. Like yeah, I feel like it I, grew. Uh, I was stuck at home for like one month. And I was like, fuck this. And I grabbed my board and I started cruising around the street spots and started running into other buddies that were skating. We're like, they're like, we never stop. We've been skating. And like all the companies and shops, that was like their best year in years. Because people sound. were told like you could, if you're outside, you, you don't gotta, have to wear a mask. And you can, you can do activities. Yeah. yeah. But I know and a so lot of shops, they were big. dealing with issues from like the wood you know, oh, oh yeah, there was a lot of like There's stuff. A lot of shortages. Yeah, and stuff. but and they were trying to find things and stuff. But once they got it in and stuff, oh, yeah. it was their best years. They yeah. they were like, it was it was the numbers. Yeah, yeah. So, so that video, yeah. that original it, it video, was big. That original video took off, and then the page grew, and then uh, there is uh, around like when Tony Hawk had this uh, like skate park hero contest. I was like, dude, I got I got something. There's this nice little pyramid flat bar. We'll, we'll start getting into some transition and skating some park and doing some, you know, respectable park obstacles in uniform. I'm like, I don't know, whatever I got to do. I might eat crap, you know, because balancing with, you know, a 28 pound vest and the belt and stuff. And I'm not going to lie, like, I don't wear boots. I wear freaking skate shoes to work. <laughs> so um, I was going to ask you that, like, if you when you're doing your 360 flips, are you in like, uh, are you in the like, uh, sneakers or no no so i was actually you know it's funny we brought him up neen i was wearing his shoes from fp so i was wearing his for a shout long out neen yeah, once again now, <laughs> now uh because i got so they're real narrow and i was busting through them like left and right so now i skate the uh i like the s the s quattros i got okay. some all black ones it looks like you you ride a thicker shoe yeah so i try to keep it like back in that day like i tried the volks and stuff like that and I mean, I have a wider foot, and I was blowing through shoes. I like the cup sole, like that old traditional fill of just so a bulkier like, shoe. 
I, I mean, you, you, you like flip tricks a lot, so you don't like a more narrow shoe? Like no. A, like a Stefan No, Genoski I feel like shoe? this shoe right here, this is my favorite shoe. The Asivant, this is the TJ Rogers colorway. This is by far my favorite shoe. It's the, it's the modeled after one of the Costins, the older Costins. Okay. So this thing is just, it's got a wide toe box, like perfect flick on it. The bottom sole is amazing. S it's, makes some really good shoes. Dude. I found out that they discontinued. Don Brown. Don you Brown. Go. Don Brown. No, like rad, the, the, the SXLs. No, oh, the yeah. XLs. Yeah, the bulky shoes, ones. There's some, they, there's some guys still skating those. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't gotten Tom that Penny. crazy yet. Yeah, the Tom Pennies are riding. still around. The Muskas. I just got a pair of the Muskas. That's my friend. So <laughs> just... Shout yeah. out Muska. Yeah, I just for, got a pair of the Muskas just for skateboard episode, dude. Just Hell for nostalgic, because yeah. the only Muskas that I had as a kid were like hand me downs, <laughs> like busted. But I, I remember, you know, thirty three years old, getting a pair of Muskas, brand new, all mine. I'm like, oh, is, is the tongue pouch still there? Yeah. All right. Hey, I, I might not be putting certain things in there, but you know, yeah. maybe my house key oh, or that something was a now. Wee pouch. Right. Yeah. So, um, no, it's just. I was going to ask when you're doing that, the, the, the service uh, and showing up at the skate parks, are you, are, are these urban areas that you're going to help like, you know, with, and deal and yeah, helping I've out been the kids looking there? for kids in like street spots and stuff like that. And I mean, the area that I work in isn't the area that I grew up skating street. So, um, I'm like, God, dude, like that's a rad, like four flat four, like, like I'd love to skate that thing. So I would periodically Wait, visit four, that set a four flat four like uh, like a like a stair set or like something i'm like dude that would, yeah i'm like dude that'd be rad like I, kids gotta be eating this up and i'm like i could see like wheel marks like at the at the on the runway of this thing and i just visit it periodically to see if like, one of these days i'd catch somebody skating street and get a session with somebody skating street but never happens or even i remember one time saw this kid and I should have known by the way he was holding his board but he was walking away from a dutch bros and he was doing the mall grab and i was like hey dude in, in my tr patrol car, I was like, hey, if you got a kickflip, I got a brand new board. Am I allowed to cuss on here? Yeah. Oh, okay. And oh, he's like, yeah. go fuck yourself. And I'm like, <laughs> all right, dude, you probably didn't have a kickflip in you anyway by that mall grab, dude. <laughs> he told me yeah, he told me to go fuck, go fuck myself. Yourself, I'm like, all right, Don't dude. Yeah. You ain't kickflipping anyway oh, by that God. mall grab, dude. So enjoy your froth from yeah. the Dutch Bros. So, but yeah, I mean, I would love, I, now I have a little bit more opportunities to position that I'm in to go and, it's like, oh, I remember our skating in the Grover's Gap. Like, but I feel like, again, like we were talking about, like these skate parks are just coming up like freaking wildflowers. You know, I feel like well, a lot of kids and that's with the, the progression of skateboarding. Like you see like kids like Laser Crawford from Peoria, Arizona. Kids is just an, a monster. But like all these young kids have had skate parks. So they grow up with like, yeah, so they the get laser kills it in the them. streets. They get so. dropped off at the skate park at like. Eight in the morning, right, on Saturday, yeah, yeah. and they're left there till like it, it's dark. And so, then you guys got lights at your skate park. So, yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. So I remember they had they had the old Vans Park at Metro Center, and that was like a treat. Like the whole like drop your mom drop you off. Like all right, I'll see you in two hours. They run errands or something like that. But man, when I was a kid, it was just all right. Like hey, we want to go skate the courthouse eight. Like we know it's like. A two and a half, three mile skate. We got this place. We could stop for a water cup, you know, on the way to there. There's the church ledges and just make a full day out of oh, it. But yeah, you know what? I wouldn't trade those days for nothing. That was nothing. raw street skating right there, man. Yeah. So when you show up now to skate parks, wherever, and the do you kids recognize you? And they're like, they oh, do. dude, yeah. kid flips and donuts yeah. is here. Like, this is going to be awesome. Yeah, they and do. And are they like trying to get boards now? Like, no, oh, no, they no? respect it. They, uh, you know, a couple of them want to challenge and, and play skate, which is yeah. all right. That's cool. There's only one, one kid that's beat or one guy. He's my age. He's, uh, he's a local to my park. I mean, he's just shreds. His name's Omar. He, uh, he's, he's really good. Yeah. He beats he's a, he's a police officer as well. No, no, he's just <laughs> a local. He came down from Vegas and. Yeah, that's it. But, um, yeah, you know, the interactions are always positive. But if I see somebody, like, you know, their board's chipped, and I just know, like, this kid's got a lot of gas. He just may not have the exposure. And that's why I'm, like, a huge advocate, too, is, like, the, hey, tag me. Tag me in, you know, any of your clips and edits or whatever, and I'll reshare them and do whatever I can on my part, like, whoever follows me to just, you know, because all it takes is somebody, you know, just to have a little push or a little exposure because – that kid that's in Avondale or Buckeye or whatever, you know, surrounding city, like just takes one set of eyes to see what that kid's got. 
and his life changes. But if I see I, that kid, he's got a busted board, and I know that he's just as a monster. It's like, hey, man, here's a couple eight fives. Just I remember being do, doing skate demos for Think Skateboards and uh, all over the country, and and always like at the end of the demo, like we would throw boards yeah. and like wheels and trucks, like throw out product, and like you know, like. Usually the kids that were getting it were like the bigger kids, you know, taller kids. Yeah. And I would always find the smaller kid that wasn't going to have that opportunity. And that, that, that was a monster like that. You watch skateboard yeah. and you're like, dude, this kid rips, but he, his board is fucked up. Yeah. You know, it's all chipped up. He probably doesn't have the finances. To do. Yeah. He's just a little ghetto kid, but he rips, loves it. Hook them up with my Because a lot of these kids that shred, man, again, it's their escape it. and their parents don't understand it. I mean, whether they come from a family, and that was my big thing too, is like, you know, my parents never understood it. They're just like, you know, I'm like, hey, you know, can I mow the backyard or pick weeds or whatever just to go buy a shot blank? Like, they just didn't understand. It's like, why, like, why, how are, you know, I, I, you know, as you get better, you're breaking more boards and you're going through boards more frequently, but they're like, you know, a lot of these kids' parents don't understand or they're not around. So it's like, hey, you know, I'm not trying to, be your dad but at the same time i believe in you here's a couple boards to set you back keep pushing dude keep you out of trouble too. exactly keep keep yourself out Especially of trouble if you're man get, yeah. get to go do it at a skate park you exactly know? <laughs> destroy exactly. Bar, bar property yep. and... have you ever done an event that was like kick flips and donuts and like had like a local shop or whatever that you got donuts from yep. and said yeah. hey we're gonna do this so uh there's a pizza shop um in tempe and they're they're super rad they're they're cool they're on board we actually like do a lot of co stuff like hey tempe let's show that park some love let's have an event and we've done i think now we've done nine events for just the community oh, right and some people use it as like a warm-up for like you know the union hills classic the phoenix am like the, you know yeah everybody's loving it. it's like dude it's like we love it best tricks um, there, and there's ways to kind of avoid, like some cities are like, hey, you know, where's your permit? It's like, look, dude, we don't have crazy amplified music. We have less than this amount of people. And it says ski to your own risk. I'm not paying anybody. Right. I'm not. Cause I remember yeah. one of the parks in Ahwatukee, one of the, uh, and dude, this was like, I think this is when a lot of like the Arizona skate community knew like, all right, this dude's about it. So this park ranger guy sees me with a box of boards, sees my buddy from Spinelli's. He's one of the team managers. He's carrying in all these pizzas. And the security guard's like, what are you guys doing with all this? Are you, are, are you with that company? I'm like, Santa Cruz? No, I wish. And I'm like, no, dude. Yeah. Like, I'm just, I, I do this like to give back to the community. And he's like, all that pizza? Like, are you guys having an event? Like, you know, we've already seen the flyers and all that other stuff. And it's like, that's great. So we get doing our thing and he's like, this has to stop. Or we're going to call PD. And I'm like, go ahead. We're not doing anything wrong. And he's like, you guys are giving out pizza and all this. Stuff. Like, dude, what's the difference of me going to McDonald's <laughs> thinking that I can smash out two quarter pounders and I can only eat half. And I'm like, hey, you know, bunch of, like, hey, you yeah. want this other burger? What's the difference, man? We'll clean up our mess. Like, I'm not I don't have like, you know, uh, an imaginary gun in this kid's head. Like, hey, you're going to nollie back hill this hip, yeah. you know, or whatever, like. We're all here because we love to skate. They love it. Everybody loves it, man. Like, look around. Like, nobody here is doing anything wrong. Nobody's, you know, doping it up in the corner or anything like that. Everybody's having a good time. Let us be. Yeah. Called Phoenix uh, PD and four units show up. And I walk out there. And the guy was, dude, he was going off on my buddy. Just yeah. like, Wait, why are you raising your voice? I'm like, he's not raising your voice. Newsflash, dude. I'm an off-duty law enforcement officer nothing that we're doing is wrong go ahead and call who you got to call oh, man. phoenix pd shows up four deep and two of the four already know who i am because i started growing a little bit of a falling by then and he's like oh, what's going on man like we know what you do and i'm like dude we're just giving back to the kids the local kids this park right it's an awatuki park it's an awesome park man but it doesn't get a lot of love right because in arizona it's like either rio union hills or d west that have some of these competitions so the people get, that can't get out to those parks, we're bringing something there for them. Yeah. He's like, oh, rad. He's like, are you selling anything? No. All of it's for free. And right? getting it away. Dude does a tray, tray bomb on, uh, you know, this pyramid with the eight foot flat in the middle of it. Like, dude, that's rad. Here's a shirt. Like, just handing stuff out. And he's like, <laughs> okay, I don't know why this guy called <laughs> and took off. Yeah. As soon as I came back in, it was like, kick flips and donuts, kick flips oh, and donuts. Geez. And I'm like, there it is, man. So, but yeah, we've hosted, I think like eight to nine events, man. 
So in a total from August 2021 to now, I've been able to gratefully give away 465 boards. What? 465 nice. boards. Nice. So, Hell yeah. Everything from completes to, and that's not including the, you know, your miscellaneous stuff. Yeah. Kid snaps his trucks. It's like, dude, what side? Oh, 149 Indies. Cool. Wait here. Yeah. Boom. Here you go, buddy. So that's really cool, man. He drives around instead of with car stereo speakers, he's driving around with boards and stuff in his car. Yeah. Giving, and them, giving, away. giving them away. Yeah. Dude. Not everyone can be. <laughs> I didn't hear about that. The car man. speaker thing. Yeah. <laughs> you heard about the yeah. Car speaker. <laughs> yeah. And then like back, like when you guys were both just killing in the skate scene, like you guys were talking <laughs> about a lot of people confusing the two of you guys, especially yeah, yeah. guys when you guys were both going around with a buzz head. So when I had, uh, I mentioned that to my buddy, so this guy came from, uh, from New York, his name's John Coppola guys in his forties, but I'm like, dude, what? Like he's his pop still. I don't know if it's like a back East thing. Like all those New York guys, yeah, like they have, got Ty Sean, they have dude, pop. he's like in his late forties and he's getting up on ledges, like chest high, like back tail. I'm like, what? But anyway, I told this guy about the, uh, you know, coming out, you know, and, and getting to do this with you guys. And he's like, He's like, oh, dude, I, I think it was Wee Man, but back at the Brooklyn Banks, there's that nine there. He was trying to switch heel it. How's me? Boom. Fine. Yeah. We cleared it up. So <laughs> now you see it, John. We cleared it up. Switch heel yeah. because I remember I was like, well, dude, yeah. Um, I was at, I was at East Coast Head for a bit. Like, yeah. I, I went to high school in Jersey, and uh, we'd go skate in New York City every weekend. Yeah. But uh, that that was uh, that's that's where I got my cover, and then he was uh, from the West Coast. Yeah. Your voice changed when you talked about being in New Jersey and stuff. You got old Guido just now. Did I? Oh, Guido. Joycey? Did I say Joycey? No, but he was pumped. I did not say Joycey. He was pumped on that because he's like, yeah. He's like, I switched trade it. And then he comes up. Wait, he switched trade He switched trade it. Not when I was there. I, he said it. The, yeah, he said it, it was right before. Like, Damn, man. He went up. But he was just shocked. Spot. He's like, what the hell? Coming I'm through and switch hill. I know you are. I'm playing the game. I'm <laughs> but it's a whole other game. animal, like those East, ska- East Coast skaters. Yeah, the pop is just insane. But Yep. Switch tray flip that. Damn. That's what he did, dude. Yeah. It happens, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, like I said, for his age, like the, some of the stuff that he puts out still, he does a, a lot of woodworking and stuff. So he, like, fabs his own ledges and stuff. And he'll build ledges, like, that it's like, dude – Nobody's going to be able to skate that but you, dude. Like, <laughs> but he's, he's rad, man. He's fun to skate with. Do you, do you still hang out with your army buddies? Were any of them that were stationed out there? Um, I'll talk Phoenix? to them. A lot of them, a lot of them. I mean, and that was the first exposure to a lot of stuff, too, is like you go to basic training and you're like, you know, there's a lot of Boomhauer voices there. And it's like, where, where the hell are you from? Oh, I'm from Arkansas, brother. Where am I? I'm like, mm. oh, okay. So a lot of them, yeah, throughout the States, you know, I keep in touch, you know, via social media or texting or anything like that. But not too many. I, I think there's only a couple that live in Arizona that will stay in touch here and there. But we all got our own lives and stuff like that. But So what's your next mission with this? Like, you've done about eight or nine events. You're still pushing forward it. Do you have another goal, like something you want to take to the next yeah, level? Yeah, you know, and uh, it kind of came to me at this last Phoenix Am because I set up kind of like a little table just talking with kids and doing like little prizes and stuff. And I would see these food trucks and everybody's always like, one of the questions is like, oh, kick clubs and donuts, what's your favorite kind of donut? And it's like, I try to stay away from donuts, dude, but a Homer Simpson strawberry glaze sprinkle, that's money thing. But <laughs> at the Phoenix Am, they have all these food trucks. I'm like, dude, right? you go yeah, and buy a slice of pizza from this food truck, and they're just killing it. Like, I was like, dude, what if I did, like, a mobile skate shop or, like, a mobile donuts thing and roll up to some of these contests? But it's, like, Grinders. Shout out to Grinders, like, the, the burger yeah. spot here at, yep. like, Huntington. It's like, what if, like... Damn, I, I don't really want to talk too much about it before somebody steals the yeah, idea. Yeah, but yeah, like, yeah, what, if, yeah. what if what if I like came up with a place that is like Grinders, right? Everything is like skate vibes and stuff like that. But what if it's like a donut shop? There and you, you have certain donuts that portray to 
certain legends in the area or something like that are coming up with some of these weird yeah, can, like you know mixtures up, like shaped like a skateboard yeah but something like that a, yeah just those weird very, mo- yeah we yeah. had a, there was a place in arizona Sprinkles. called fractured prune where you can make your own and you can throw like boba on your donuts and stuff like that like just all those crazy things so yeah, so something like that some kind of mobile skate shop or truck or taco kind of stand yeah. thing donut related yeah sounds kind of fun you could do like you know do a kickflip within five get a free donut you know i have done that that. yeah yeah so when i show up when we show up at these events and stuff like five tries that's too many tries well like the littler kids but like yeah if somebody rolls up to me and i've seen them before guy like give the kid a chance at least (laughs) you you get one chance (laughs) to blow it and then your other chance you land it way to go way to go kid cost and all you guys when they're going and rolling around like hey do a kickflip and they're handing out like sbs and stuff i'm sure they're giving them more than just that try yeah no i've gone around and done i've seen it yeah and we've given tries we've had some but most of the kids do it within two. Yeah. Have, you had, have you had a kid yell out, go fuck yourself? Never had a kid tell <laughs> me to go fuck myself. I have. I did dealt with that. Yeah. So. I did have a kid. He got up. He was like in this homeless encampment. And I go, do a kickflip. Got a boy. He's like, oh, fuck yeah. We been like, he was all excited. <laughs> did a kickflip and almost landed like his front truck on this homeless guy's head. This homeless guy was sleeping on the street where the dude yeah. just... Like went to go skate and do it, and I'm like, of whatever course. on this dude. Like when, no matter how bad of a day you're having, if you see Wee Man, you get so stoked. Like a- a- anytime I'm with this guy, anyone that sees him <laughs> is just like girls, kids, oh, guys. Yeah. They're like, oh. We were sitting the last so time I seen up. him. The last time I seen him, we were like, kind of like me? hid and tucked back <laughs> at the bar, and like people coming through. Yeah, I, I definitely, I got to yeah. see it firsthand. I'm like, dude, how do you walk through places like this? He's like, I just put a certain look on my face. So I don't turn my head and I just keep walking. I'm like, it That's works, man. Does. I try. Unless it's going to get us free food. Uh, then I just, then I'm like, <laughs> then show myself show. Yeah. super big. Like, right. I'm like, yep, I'm here. Yeah. Yeah. What's up? <laughs> well, uh, Zach, it's been super fun, man. That time I went back quick, man. fast. Oh. That was like pushing down the street. It felt like. Um, glad you could come down. It's crazy California weather. We never yeah, thought we'd have something like yeah. this. I'm glad you made it down. Ever since I met you, we were just starting the podcast. I'm like, one day we'll get him on, you know, because we're obviously we're gonna have. You people- always repost our stuff too. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm a big. I I like it. I like the idea of just bringing in people from all different walks of life. And yeah, you guys know how to gauge with the people. You know. Yeah, we're not. Yeah, it's it's it's. There's no there's no dead time, right? You guys are just continuously gauging and. Like I said, the feedback from when I reshare it, people are like, dude, this is rad. Subscribe. Nice. So there, There's been some dead time. It's all but, right, though. But it, I think it needs that sometimes, you know? Yeah. Let it air out. Let it air. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyways, on that note, I want to thank you for coming out. Hey, thank you totally guys for inviting yeah. us. And Seriously, you can man. come by. And especially if you do an event, let us know. We'll post about it and stuff, cool. too. Yeah, we'll we'll tell it, people guys. about it. We'll get it out there. Are you, all your events usually in um phoenix yeah so that's that's the thing too is i want to expand you know bring it out here to california yeah other states you know and 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 you know another thing too is grow to a level where i could start putting in like legit diys or parks there's some areas you know towards like reservations and stuff like these kids don't even have parks yeah. so how stoked would you be if you were at a skate park skating and you're like itching for something sweet and a donut truck Full, pulls up dude that's it man remember how stoked you used to get at the skate park when like the ice cream truck would pull up like think of oh, Don't my know. jackass ptsd would be like oh dude it's a setup it's an undercover cop they see a lot of people here they're gonna get them with donuts and then they're gonna handcuff them and throw them in the back uh, <laughs> no, I'm when you say i thought you were gonna go cop. a different direction like van wilder or something like somebody was gonna give you a uh, a long john and it was uh, full of like pig semen or something <laughs> could uh, go that route too <laughs> anyways yeah no thanks punch always good yeah and remember everybody we got a small little sponsor nema supplements and double i m a and if you go there and in the barcode you put for the coupon lil for lil rev for revolution you get 15 percent off 
Ponch has been taking him. He loves him. He calls me all the time. Tells me. Yeah. Him. So a lot of energy. A lot of energy. I've I've noticed it lately on the show. Uh, really good. I'm, thank you. I'm glad. Thank you. So yeah. Follow Kickflips and Donuts on Instagram. You appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Go get yourself a donut and fist bump a cop. There you go. Yeah. They're still good guys. Woo!